often. I'll probably do one of these every couple of weeks for you guys. So if you miss out on something, uh, don't worry, we'll do another one. And you can also ask, you know, if, you, if you've got a burning question and you, you need to get it answered right away, you can always put it in the support. So anyway, um, James, if you've got anything specifically you want covered, just ask away there and I'll, uh, I'll get to it so, so you don't miss anything that's, that's important to you. Okay, Scott says, I saw where you mentioned a simple one-page site uh hard to rank with site pop what if the client site he wants ranked will it still work um, if it's a one page site it does not mean that it can't rank if it's a one page site that's got no content on it then it's going to have trouble uh, but there there are a lot of one page sites so like some people will do a very long sales page and they'll put links to content, but the links will be anchor links to content in the same page. That's perfectly okay. I've seen a lot of pages like that rank very well. So just because it's a one page site is not necessarily a, a huge negative. As long as that page has a lot of content on it, it's got good stuff and it will keep a visitor on it. Because remember guys, when when site pop gets you up and, and Google actually starts showing you to real people, they're going to start clicking. So make sure that when they click, they get what they're looking for. You know, if you're, if you're doing this with a thin content site and somebody gets there and they're like, oh, there's nothing here. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to bounce off. If they bounce off, that's as bad a signal as the good signal you just sent. So you just negated everything that you did. So, you know, keep, keep that in mind. Like SEO, it's not a one, one, one willy flat game. It's a game across a lot of different things, a lot of different variables. And most people don't have access to the big chunk that we're providing. But this is not the whole enchilada. It's not going to do everything for you. There is no magic bullet in the SEO game. There's not like you can throw up any site and do this one thing and it's just going to rank. There's never, there's never been a situation like that. That is fantasy land. There's a lot of SEO guys that want you to believe that. You know, they, they say, hey, buy my thing and it, it'll just cure everything for you. That doesn't exist. I've never seen it. There's a lot of stuff that, that will do a lot of good things for you, but none of them are going to do the whole thing. You've, you've got to have, especially at this point in the game, you've got to have content that your, your viewers are going to consume. That's the biggest signal to Google is the content that they put out is actually good. Because if they put out poor content, they know what's going to happen. People are going to start using another search engine. And if that happens, guess what? Their ad dollars diminish and that's really what they're in this business for they're not in this business to provide search results they're in this business to to control eyeballs that they can place ads in front of if you don't know that's the game that's why google exists their whole purpose in life is to sell ads they have created a monster community to display those ads to and the monster community is everyone searching. So if they don't provide a good user experience, their whole empire crumbles. So that's the underlying game. You know, there's always an ulterior motive and that's Google's ulterior motive. That's why they do what they do. Okay, let's see here. Moving down the list, Craig asked, uh, Starting to see some really good results with SitePop on clients' e-com store. Uh, not built links to their store in over two months and rankings continue to improve. That's awesome, Craig. Uh, links, are, links are good. You don't really need to do links like, like crazy, like a lot of people think you need to. I always say, you know, depending on the keyword, uh, you know, I've, and I've said this for a long time. I, I'm like, you can stop shooting the elephant when he's dead. 
<laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of been one of my mantras in, you know, people will say, how many links do I need? You know, how much content do I need? If you're ranking high, that tells you you've got enough. You know, if you start to drop, you might need to add some more to it. But the fact that you've got links and your e-commerce store is going up with the use of SitePop, it tells me that you have a good combination in place. Just keep an eye on it. You know, if all of a sudden you start to start to decline, just, just add some more links to it. But you should be good. Once you get traction and Google starts sending real traffic to your site and they like it and they send more and more signals, this is like a snowball. Site pop really just got the ball rolling for you and now it's going to snowball. That also brings up another point. People ask me, when can I stop using site pop? I don't think you should ever stop using site pop because it's going to, it's going to continue to send a fractional amount of the really good, the best of the best search experiences. Think about that. What would happen if you know, you, you got a bunch of traffic and then all of a sudden you stopped doing the, the really key factor that was making it happen. And then all of a sudden, your, you know, your traffic diminishes. Every time I've seen this happen with Google, it's a lot harder to get it back. And I don't know why that is. I think they've got something in place to watch that. But when you stop doing something and then you do it again because your rank went down, remember I said that's like a sand trap. So for me, if you get something that's working, I would never stop doing it. And that includes links. You know, if you've, if you've built links, you know, over a period of time and they're working for you, I wouldn't stop. I, I might slow it down because I know the cost of that is expensive. And the whole idea of business is, you know, to lower your ad costs. And SEO is an ad cost, no matter how you slice it. If you think SEO is free, you're kidding yourself because it's taking your time. And if you don't value your time, you're probably not a business owner. Certainly not an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs value their time almost more than money because that represents true freedom. So anyway, that's... Uh, I don't mean to go on like like I'm on a soapbox here, but uh, anyway, okay. Will this webinar be recorded? Yes, from about the 20 minute mark. I I did forget to do the recording in the very beginning, but we are recording now, and I'll put that up in the members area. Apologize for that. Usually I have it start automatically, and I didn't for some reason on this one. So we are recording now. If you miss something from the beginning, you can go ahead, just, just ask your questions away. I'm going to go through this until we get all the questions answered. So if you didn't hear the answer, just go ahead and ask it again. Uh, another thing, too, we will be doing more of these. So I want to keep in contact with you guys so I can keep helping you to get the results that you're looking for and the, you know, the results that you need for your clients. Uh, both Chris and I have been doing this for a very long time. There's, there's probably nothing in this industry we haven't seen or, or been up against at this point. So whatever you run into, whatever challenges, let us know and, and we can help you. Okay, our contact name in the app won't update or change. All other fields update. Let's see, our contact name. Look into this, please. Yeah, Armando probably put that in a support ticket. We need to kind of take a closer look at that because that's not something I've seen or, or I'm familiar with uh, that being an issue. One thing is if you're, if you're doing something in the back office and it's not working for some reason, try a different browser. And another thing too is try... Like Chrome is, we've always had really good luck with Chrome as far as updating stuff in the back office. And also try the incognito window. If something's not working, try using the, the Chrome incognito window. That might fix it for you. There's been some like weird stuff. So many people have different computer configurations. It's really hard for us to, you know, to kind of guess what's going on and, until we actually see it. 
But that has solved a lot of issues like that. So give that a shot and see if that works for you. Okay, Brett, does the app work on an iPod Touch, uh, which is similar to an iPhone? I can't tell you for sure if it's going to work. You'd have to try it. It, it should, I'm going to say it should, like on Android devices. Uh, there's a lot of different Android devices out there. What we have found is the phones work the best. The phones stay connected. Like the phone is always listening. It's always communicating with the network. A lot of the other devices like the iPads and, and uh, you know, the Android tablets and all that stuff, what happens is they go to sleep. If they go to sleep, then they go offline and all of a sudden it looks like your app is not connected. So you stop getting searches for that. So that can be problematic. So the best bet by far is the phones, the iPhones and the Android phones. Those is what we would recommend. In fact, if you're dealing with customers, that's all I would tell them it works on. I would say it needs to be on a phone. I wouldn't even bring up the, the fact that they can run it on a tablet or a desktop or, or their, their Mac computer devices because it's just a pain in the butt and you're, you're gonna be managing that. So you don't want a lot of client uh, you know, issues, a lot of client support. Once they put it on their phone, it's done. It's a done deal, it just runs. If they're running it on a Windows device, like a Windows 10, which, you know, that's our Windows app. That app is always getting updated. They're always getting notices that it's updated. And if you've got a client uh, and they see that, they're going to want to know why. They're going to want to call and ask you, and it's going to chew up your time. So if, if I were you and you're working with clients, I wouldn't even tell them it runs on a desktop. I would just say it has to run on a phone, iPhone or an Android phone. And that will eliminate the majority of your customer support issues. Because once they get it on, it's, it's just done. It's running. There's, there's been no issues with the phones. So that is what I would recommend. Now, if you're doing these yourself and you've got, you know, tablets and all that stuff, you can go in and you can play around and configure them to not go to sleep and do stuff like that. But, you know, that. That's just, it's a little extra work to do that. Okay. Jay says, cool green screen effect. How are you doing that? Uh, with Zoom, it's really easy. To right down by your, your video button, there's a little up arrow, and you can choose a virtual background. So you can put any image you want in there. So that's that's a pretty, pretty easy thing. Uh, like, like right now, it, it's a little waffly because I don't even have a green screen up behind me. I, uh, if you have an actual green screen, it's a lot better. It's a lot cleaner and smoother. I honestly, I forgot that was, was even up there. I can, I can turn it off so it's not, not waffle. And that's my actual background. I've got a big fish behind me. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh, Okay, Jizikali uh, wants to know if I can use an iPad for the app if it's on Wi-Fi. Yes, absolutely. Wi-Fi is no problem. Like connecting your phones or your, you know, your apps, even your computers, running them over Wi-Fi is not a problem. Like I just mentioned, the phones are a lot more reliable because they don't go to sleep. They're constantly listening for the signals back and forth, in and out. Um, if you're on the, the pads, uh, iPads or, or uh, tablets or any of that stuff, a lot of times they're configured to conserve energy and go to sleep if nothing's happening. They're not actively listening in a lot of cases. So you, you might have to go into your settings and uh, reconfigure your settings to make it stay alive. Because if it goes offline, even if it's connected to Wi-Fi, if it goes offline and, and we can't see it, it looks like it's not connected. So then you don't get credit for the searches. So you want the devices running all the time if possible. 
Okay, Van says you need Android 7 or higher and you can buy those all day long for 20 bucks. That's, that's exactly right. Um, I've gotten a bunch of them on, uh, on eBay. A lot of times you can find them on eBay. What happens is uh, the phone providers, like the, the cellular networks, they do these free phone deals and you have to have a 24 month contract or a 12 month contract. And then at the end of the contract, you give them the phone back and they give you a new phone. So they have all of these phones that are like a year old that they want to dump. So a lot of times you can find a guy on, on eBay or, you know, some of these other sites, some of these uh, auction sites or uh, surplus sites, and you can buy the phones, you know, like he said, all day long for 20 bucks. I've seen some at 30, you know, different, different prices, but there are people that are blowing them out. So just look for that. Okay, let's see here. Okay, a lot of people said that answers my questions. Cool. How many weeks to get through the Google Dance? Okay, this, that's a great question, Patrick. I've been doing this for a long time. I have seen Google Dances that lasted 20 minutes, and I've seen Google Dances that lasted almost two months. There's not a real true answer for that. Two months is the longest I've ever seen, and I got to tell you, that one, that one really tested me <laughs> because we were, we were working on a, a client site, and we were being very aggressive. And we had a huge drop. And I tell everybody, I said, don't let them see you sweat. Do not alter course when you drop. That's very important. And this was a client and they dropped. And like I said, it was a massive drop. And we continued to do what we were doing. We continued and continued and weeks went by. And every week that passed, I started questioning my, you know, my judgment more and more. And I got to tell you, I was really biting my nails when we got into that eighth week, but then all of a sudden, boom, it popped right back and it was better than it ever was. And it still is to this day. So I can tell you, however long it is, hang in there. Don't alter course. Keep on doing what you're doing. Um, you know, they, they, they can bounce around all the time though. Like I said, I've seen Google dances that lasted 20 minutes. This happens all the time. They're constantly testing. They're constantly like, if they see something happen, they might, they might shift it like right now to, to like send you a signal like, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. And a lot of people do. A lot of people pull back. As soon as they see that, they're watching their ranking like a hawk. And, and I, I tell everybody, don't do that. Don't watch your rank like a hawk. It doesn't work that way. This is a long-term effect. When you're doing SEO, it's like equity. You're building equity. You know, the stock market's going to go up and down, but in the long term, you should have a gain. You know, if you've done your, done your homework and done your stuff right, you should, over the long term, have a significant gain. So that's, that's basically how you play the game. Okay, let's see. Ted says, if my WordPress site is set to open with recent posts, does site pop go there or does it still go to the homepage? Okay, that, that's a great question. On a site, the way site pop works is it's going to run the search and it's looking for your domain. It's not looking for a particular page. It's looking for the first page on that domain that shows up. That's the link it's going to click on first. It's not necessarily going to click on your homepage first every time. If your homepage comes up first, then it will click on it. But if a deep page comes up, then that's going to be the point of entry. Remember, the whole point to this is to be natural. So that's the only way that you could do this naturally. So anyway, that's what it does. It, it clicks on whatever link it finds first, and then it's going to spend time on that page. And then after it spends a certain amount of time on that page, it's going to inventory the internal links, and then it's going to follow one of them randomly. And it'll do that a few times, ultimately landing on the page that you put in the contact page URL. 
and then it's going to close the browser session out. So that's the way it's set up to work. So it doesn't matter, you know, the, the more pages that you have, the more likely you're going to rank for multiple keywords. So it, it will find the first one that comes into play. Okay, Scott, what's the app called in a Google Play Store? Either one in the Google Play or in the, in the Mac Store, uh, Apple Store rather, it's called Marketing Assistant. So if you run a search for Marketing Assistant, we're the one with the little blue light bulb. In the Apple Store, the publisher is LimboVision. And in the Android Store or the Google, um, the Google App Store, uh, the app publisher is James Ormiston. So, but either way, it's the one with the little blue light bulb. I think there's multiple marketing assistants out there for different stuff, but uh, look for the one with the little blue light bulb. That's us. Okay, Jay says, it, do you use Google Search Console to figure out the optimum amount of clicks to send? No, we do not. Uh, what we're doing however many keywords that you put in that's split between your monthly allotment of search so it, let's say you had 10 keywords and two of them were getting a lot more searches if you're looking in your console and two of them is getting a lot more searches than the rest what you could do is you could take those two keywords and just put them in multiple times that's the, every time a keyword is in the search, like you've got 12 slots, but 12 keywords. If you put the same keyword in multiple times, it's going to get more searches. So you could technically vary the amount of searches that any particular keyword got within your project. That's how you would do it. You could just put the same keyword in multiple times if you want that keyword to get more searches. So that's an easy fix for that. Um, we're with 12 keywords and 500 searches, believe it or not, that's not a lot of searches for any given keyword. You know, that's the, it's not a tremendous amount. And keep in mind also that these searches are going to get mixed when it adds your, your company to it, your brand, because when it runs a search and it doesn't find you, it's going to go back. It's going to pogo stick back in the search box and add your brand to it. It's going to append that search and rerun it. Most of you, when you add your brand or your URL to the search phrase, most of you are going to come up on the first page for that. And then that's your entry point. It's going to click through. When it sends enough of those type of signals to Google, Google's going to start raising your site. You're going to start getting more search traffic. And this stuff is going to just blend into the background very, very nicely. So that's, uh, that's really it. Now, as far as optimum amount of clicks, if you, let's say for instance, you've got a brand new site and it's got nothing and you're, you're looking at, you know, at how many clicks particular keywords get, you, you just, you know, you want to dance lightly into it. So you might just connect one app and get less searches. You know, if you're in the agency, you can actually set the searches to lower. You can set it to whatever you want in the agency version. But what we've found on most average sites, even fairly new sites, that 500 searches is really pretty optimal as long as it's spread between a few keywords. Now, if you're, if you're already ranked and, you know, you've got particular keywords that you're really trying to hit hard, then I would recommend that you only put in maybe three or four keywords because they'll get hit a lot more often. That keyword will get more searches to it and you'll have more impact for those particular keywords. Now, I also recommend like as a starting point, people ask what keywords should I put in? I always recommend if you want to get quick results, put in keywords where you're back on page two, three, and four those will move up the fastest because they have what we call traction. And whenever you have a traction keyword and you add, you know, this extra spark to it, they move up pretty quickly and you have a really good chance of sticking one on the first page and then starting to get real traffic to it. 
once the real traffic starts coming, as long as those are good signals, you can back it up. You can go and change those keywords up. You can either add more variations of different keywords, or you can just add different keywords altogether. Start pushing those up. Like once your once your main keywords go up on the first page, rerun your search, you know, go back to SEM Rush, look and see which keywords pulled up, you know, which ones are now on page two, three, and four, and then pull those up and just keep continuing that game. So that, that's how you're going to get the best maximum optimum results over the long period with us. Okay, Armando wants to know where the recordings are posted. If you go into the members area, not the back office, the members area, that, that's where everything is. There's a bonus section there. Uh, that's where you'll find like the WordPress site is in there. The pages, I actually put the links to the pages if you just want to recreate it on your own. There's been some people that had difficulty downloading the, the WordPress zip file that I put up there. So we put the actual URL links of the pages themselves. So if you want to just copy it and duplicate it, you can do that. But also there's a there's a Q&A tab in there, and that's where we put the Q&A recordings. So if you go in there, that's where you'll... Uh, that's where you'll find that. If you're in the back office, you can also get to that. There's a there's a link up in the top in the back office where you can get to that as well. Okay, EJ says, I've been selling to clients and charging a setup fee large enough to purchase three phones that cost $20 each. Walmart, Target, Amazon, they all have them. Haven't been a problem. That's awesome. That you know, that's really good advice. I didn't realize you could go buy the phones at, you know, Walmart, Target, and and Amazon brand new like that for twenty bucks. That's really cool. Okay, Matt says, how much content does a site need, uh, and how many words should have at a minimum? Okay, here here's the deal with content. I look at content more as engagement than I do length. And what I mean by that is if you've got video on your pages and the video is compelling, the video is going to hold their attention, that's really the goal of content. It's not the amount of words on the page. It's how long the viewer stays on the page. You could have a, a page with 10,000 words on it. If the guy comes and he looks at it for two seconds and he bounces off, I don't think it matters. The, the thing that matters is how long you engage them. So really important here from a content standpoint and an SEO perspective, you want to make your content look enticing and easy to read, easy to consume. As far as I'm concerned, the worst thing you could do is put a bunch of content all in the same font, the same, you know, all just black and white down the page. You want to break it up. It's just like writing really good, compelling email copy. You want to make it in very short chunks, very easy to consume, and put headers to it. Put headlines above each section of content. Because what will happen is you'll get guys that are called skimmers and scanners. And what they are, they don't want to read everything, but they want to get the gist of the content. So they will skim the page. And what they're looking for is they're looking for stuff that stands out, like bullet points, headlines, bolded text. So mix it up. Make your content interesting. Make it easy on the eyes. Make it, you know, put colors to it. Put different, you know, different colors and sections. Like if you've got a long page, don't just have all black text the same size on a white background. That's boring. It's hard to look at. It's like reading a book. It's work. You don't want to make it like work to your viewer. You want it to be engaging and entertaining. Look at, uh, go to the, go to the store and look at the, 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 <laughs> for lack of a better word, I'll call them the trash magazines, trash rags, like National Enquirer. You'll notice it's not just black text on a white page. It's very colorful. There's bold headlines. There's calls. There's draws. There's arrows. There's all this stuff to engage the viewer. 
They know if they don't engage you, you're not going to pick it up. You're not going to buy it. It's the same thing here. The other thing is if you've got video on the page, then you don't need as much content. A lot of times what guys will do is they'll take the video, they'll make a really good compelling video, they'll transcribe the content out of the video and they'll put that content below the video. So the page has both text content and video content. A lot of times what you'll get is somebody will be watching the video for a certain amount of time and then they'll wanna skip forward so they'll scroll the page knowing that it's the same content in the video. So that shows Google not only time on site, but scrolling the page as well, which is really you know, another good positive signal. So anyway, it's, it's not necessarily about the length of content. There's no magic number, like you don't have to have 500 words or 1500 words or 2500 words. I don't think that's where the magic number lies. The magic number lies in how long the person engages with it. So the better you make your content, the easier on the eyes, the easier to consume, the more compelling, the longer you'll keep them there. So that, that would be my, uh, my recommendation as far as content. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm very excited to see what results I get from SitePop. Uh, I've been using the desktop CTR bots with great success for multiple clients, including my own. All right, well, cool. I think, you'll, I think you will be excited when you see what this does. The deal with the bots, you know, I've heard pros and cons with them. Some people have gotten good results with them. I do believe that will expire. You know, Google is really smart. They're really on to stuff. So if you're using bots that are not real people, um, just be prepared for it to end at some point. You know, I don't see what we're doing is going to have an end to it. It's just going to snowball and cycle. So that'll be cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your results. You know, all of you guys, we would love your testimonials too. If you're getting, uh, you know, as soon as you start using this and you start seeing good results, send those over to us because we, you know, we use those in our webinars. We use that as, as proof because a lot of people don't believe what's going on. You know, they never do. You can't give them enough proof. So fresh, good case studies and testimonials, we, we love that. So pour those on us. Okay, Ted says, if my WordPress site, okay, I think, I think we covered that one already. That might have been a repost. Okay, Leslie, when we assign a web code for a device, are we stuck with that campaign or can we assign the traffic to another campaign without changing the code on the device? Okay, here's the deal. When you create a campaign, there is a code created that matches that campaign. That's the code for that campaign. When you put that code on a device, that shows our back office that, okay, there's one device connected to that project, so it's gonna get that amount of searches. Now, you can, that device, if all of a sudden you decide, well, I don't wanna use that project anymore, all you have to do is log out on the device, like if you've got a, an iPhone or an Android phone, just log out, and when you log back in, it will give you the ability to change the code. So you could change and you could reassign a different code to that device. So I'm, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but that's how the system works. So you're not stuck, like if you put a project code into a device, you're not stuck with that project to that device forever. It's As soon as you log out, it will give you the ability to change the project code. You cannot put more than one project code on any one device. It does not work that way. Uh, they're, they're individual. There's no way to add two project codes to one phone. So it's one phone connected to one project at a time, and they are editable. Now, here's, here's another thing. You can, you can change the code. You can change the project code. So let's say you had a uh, let's let's say for instance you had a 
a project and it had a code to it and that code was connected to phones out there and you wanted to change the project you could just go in and change the project you don't have to change the the project code you could go in you could change the url all of that stuff change everything about the project you could do that so that would be one way to to get get that done okay Brett's, uh, Brett asks, does a phone need to be on a cellular contract or just connected to Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is perfectly fine. You do not have to have a cell contract for this. Any device connected to Wi-Fi works just perfectly. So if you're going to buy like phones, you don't have to buy the, the phone contract. You just need the device itself. And as long as it connects to Wi-Fi, you're good. You're good to go. Okay, Patrick says, for a local plumber site going to a new town, do you need to add a page on the site for that town and then the keyword in SitePop? That is a really good question. There's not a really clear-cut answer for it. I would say it's a good idea. If you've got different, uh, different towns or different cities that you operate in, you might want to have a different page. You can overdo that, though. You know, I've seen guys that set these up, and it looks like a like a directory, and it, you know, it it it's a it's a slippery slope. What looks like spam. If you've got like ten pages for ten different cities, and they all say the same thing, and you're just swapping the city name out, I personally don't think that's a great idea because that's pretty much duplicate content. But if you had a page up for let's say three different cities and it was all very unique content for the city uh, then i think it's a great idea so but you can have like in the in the local industry the local arena let's say i have seen sites like local plumber sites that rank for multiple cities just the way they add it in through the content without doing you know a page for each city um, anything that you can make that that site or that page relevant to you have a chance at ranking for so just by adding that content to the you know to the pages now that said you know one of the biggest things on on page is your title so if you have the the city name in the title that's you know that's an important factor the other thing I'll tell you guys at this point in the game about titles and descriptions and, and the coding of your sites and all that from an on-page perspective, it's more now about the action, the interaction that the, the title and the description gets versus stuffing it with keywords. The, the whole game of stuffing it with keywords is a done deal. It's over. It's long since passed. Yes, it's important if the keyword's in the title and the description. I'm not saying it's not important. But stuffing keyword, 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 keyword is not working anymore because no one clicks on it. I don't care how good your stuff is. If no one clicks on it, that's a signal to Google. It's a bad signal. So what would be better in the, in the description and the title is if you put something really compelling in there. And <clears throat> one of the things that I'll do there is I'll truncate. I will take and I'll, I'll truncate those with the dot, dot, dot. So they have to click to find out what the rest of the sentence is. And I'll always dot, dot, dot it at a very crucial thing. They call it a cliffhanger. You know, I'll say, you know, for get your free dot, dot, dot. And then they have to click. What am I going to get for free? You know, they, they have to click it to find out. It's like opening a loop. They've got to close the loop or they don't feel good about it. <laughs> so same thing with your descriptions. You know, make them compelling and actually tell people what to do. Say, you know, click here if you would like a free estimate. You know, click here. Tell them what to do. Put an actual call to action in your description. You know, actual calls to action. And another thing, this was a good trick for a long time, but it's a bad trick now is putting your phone number in your title. That was one, at one point we were recommending that because we said, look, 
all we have to do is get you on page one. If you're a dentist, people aren't looking to read about dental stuff. They're looking to call a phone number. So we would have our dentists put their phone number in the titles. Problem with that now is if they get what they need and they don't click through, it's a bad signal. So don't put your phone number in your titles anymore. You can put in the title, you know, click here to call us now and then have that go to the phone number but you've got to get the click first. Very, very important. Okay, Armando says, if they are personally using tablets and desktops, I've been using this mouse jiggler app to keep the devices awake. Oh, cool. So I will, uh, I'm actually gonna copy that and I'll put that up in our, uh, our members areas. Let me just copy that. And paste it into a text doc here. Thank you for that. That's, uh, that's really cool. I'll put that in so other people can, uh, can know about it. Awesome. I, I actually, I learn as much from you guys as you learn from me, believe it or not. So, um, okay. Jonathan says on the app, are there other features like chat, uh, page load, links and more okay showing anything okay so on the app here here's what happened with the iphone app we had to put chat in there to get them to pass it it's not really meant to be a usable chat so uh, that was an issue that we experienced we had a, a nightmare of a time getting that app to pass in the in the apple store so there there was some stuff that we had to add in there that we didn't run we never really planned on its functionality now one thing on the on the regular app up at the top there is a uh, there is a section there where it says load speed and then let me see let me look at mine and see what it what it actually says it says status live load time and then there's a little blue arrow up to the right. When you click the little blue arrow, what that does, that will take you over to, uh, to a GT metrics report. That's an actual real report. We pay for those and you can actually see the performance of your site. If you're, if you're running this on, on a mobile device, it'll show you like your load time, it'll show you the page size, it'll show you a whole bunch of metrics and that's another important thing for SEO is load speed. If you don't have your site optimized for load time, that's something you might want to want to address. If you've got clients and you look at their load time and it's horrible, basically what that means is they're going to they're going to be providing a bad user experience for all the mobile users out there. Google doesn't like that. So you might want to offer that service. You can go over to Fiverr. You can, you can find guys on Fiverr all day long that will optimize WordPress for, for speed. And you can, you know, you can get them to do it for 50 bucks. You can charge your client 150 bucks. So it's, it's another good add on sale for you. And the app will support that they need that. So you can show them right on the app, say, hey, click the little blue arrow, look at this. This, is, this report's not showing favorable for you. Here's another thing we can fix for you. Gives you another opportunity to, to sell them on another service. Okay, Craig says, since August 6th, I've only seen searches from Windows devices in my report. Although I get a lot of IP variation, seems strange. Is there a bug or, or uh, none of the other users using Mac, iPhone, or Android? Uh, Craig, that is, we, we do have a, a still a bug in our back office on the reporting side of stuff. So that's something you, you know, probably ignore that at this point in time. We, we are constantly working to update, upgrade, and get all that stuff ironed out <coughs> oh, excuse me so yeah so that you're, you're you're basically not seeing the correct information back there on that 
Okay, in the iPhone app, are there options? Okay, that one, I just answered that one about the chat, the, the project manager and all that. That was stuff, I'm not really sure if that stuff even works or not. We had to put that in to get the app to pass through the Apple Store. It was a real pain in the ass, that whole process. I don't know how many times we had to go through the the vetting process and the application process and all that, but uh, anyway, we finally got it in. Okay, here's one. I noticed my site pop dashboard, uh, the colors show up green, red, and yellow. Indicators for active campaigns is now gone. Is that feature coming back? Okay, we we recently had to do a lot of modifications in the back office because a lot of the platforms updated and changed, and we had to we were scrambling there for <laughs> for a couple of weeks getting everything dialed back in. Uh, we do have a lot of plans for adding more features and stuff to this and making it more useful. So if that's um, if that's something that you would like, you can go ahead and put a put a support ticket in so our guys in the back in the back room can can see that and they'll know that you want that back. Okay. What exactly would you search for on eBay to find cheap Android phones? Um, you might do just that, cheap Android phones. Um, what I was looking for when I was doing it was I was looking for um, I threw in the keywords Wi-Fi. I put in Android phone. Um, you can also put in uh, Android V7, version version 7. And then basically you just look through. You just look through the list. It's going to show up a whole bunch of stuff. You don't want the old garbage stuff. You know, you're looking for, you know, recent up-to-date phones. Okay, how does the network of users help everyone's site and searches? Okay, um, that is pretty, I thought that was pretty well explained, but the network, when you add your device to the network, your, your device actually becomes part of the network. So your device will be running searches for other people on the network and their devices will be running searches for you. It's not, this isn't about your phones running searches for your sites. This is about other people's phones running searches for your sites. Now the fact that your phones are typically in the same area, that means that your phones will run searches for your own site as well, but it's all they're also going to be running searches for other people too. So it looks for the geolocation of the business. And then what happens is it looks for devices that are closest to that. So naturally, your own devices are going to be in that circle in most cases. If you want to change that, you can just change the the geolocation of the of the business in there and then it will grab searches from that area you know closest but i i really wouldn't do that i wouldn't mess with that i would i would leave the you know the business address where it was it's perfectly fine that your devices run searches for your own sites that's perfectly natural but just keep in mind other people will be running those searches for you as well so so it'll all it'll all come clean in the wash Okay, let's see. We're, okay, if you only have campaign but 50 devices. Let's, okay, so you only have one campaign but 50 devices. Do you get all of your available searches applied to that campaign? Yes, you could do that. I don't know that I would recommend that for any one site unless it's, that site had huge volume of searches already. Um, then I, I really wouldn't recommend that unless that were the case. But yes, if you're running the agency version, you have allotted your full amount of searches and you can assign them as you like. So if you only had one campaign, you could go in there and you could assign all those searches to that one campaign if you wanted to. And as long as you had enough devices connected to support it, yes, you would get all of those to that one campaign. 
again, I don't think that's the best of ideas, but it is possible. Okay, why does my personal devices and IPs not showing up in our control panel dashboard? Uh, again, so Armando, the searches, you know, the, the back office, the, the reporting on that, some of that reporting is, is incorrect, inaccurate. Some people were seeing other people's keywords showing up in their reports. Again, that's not really happening. It's, it's a bug in our reporting system in the back office. But it will be a mix. You know, your devices are, are going to be searching for your own keywords, and they're going to be searching for everyone else's, and same thing with them. So it is a, a very natural mix. And, and same thing with the types of devices too. Just know that we're, we're working on that to update that, but uh, you should be getting a, a pretty strong mix. There's a tremendous amount of cell phones connected to the network now. So it's not just, it's not just desktops. In fact, it's a vast majority of them are cell phones. So, okay, let's see. If you use your About Us page instead of the Contact page, will that still work? Yes, you can use any page. It doesn't really matter. We recommend a Contact page because the reason for that is that's a likely place that someone would land, get your contact information, then close the browser. But if you had that information on an About Us page or any other page in the site, it's perfectly okay to put whatever URL you want in, the, in that, uh, that slot. Okay. Oh, B says your green screen is off. Yes, I, I turned it off just to show the functionality there. Okay, George, uh, if I want to eventually boost an affiliate site I own that has nothing but an opt-in landing page, do you suggest creating relevant optimized content pages? Okay, so Again, I, I kind of, I, I hit that one early on in the, in the recording. You can have, it's okay to have a one page site, as long as there's enough content on it to engage a user and keep them there for, for any given length of time. That's, that's perfectly okay. It's not optimal though. I mean, a regular site should have multiple pages to it. So that's, you know, that's something that, that, that is just a given. So if you're gonna have a one page landing page for an affiliate site, I would go and I would research what keywords, you know, the best keywords that are related and relevant to that, and I would create more pages. So for sure, I would do that. If you do have a one page site, you might be asking the question, how do I put my contact URL in there? The way to do that is you can put anchor text links inside the content. So you can put links to the same page. You're just linking to an anchor in the page. So you would, you would name the anchor in the part of the site that had your contact information. And then that anchor is going to be domain.com forward slash. And then I believe it's a pound sign. And then the anchor, the anchor text. And then that way you can have a, a link inside a single page to go to that. Okay, Hamina says you can use the email I sent you. Okay, I will look at that. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not in my email right now, but I'll check that out. And uh, if that's something that belongs in there, I'll, I'll put it up for everybody. So thank you. Hamina, you're awesome. <laughs> Okay, Leslie, if all my devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi connection, is this less preferable than having devices in different locations? It's perfectly fine, Leslie. Um, I've got probably 10 devices here in my office all connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, nothing wrong with that. The network is so big now, everything is really masked. It's masked really, really well. The other thing about that, Google is very used to multiple devices running off the same Wi-Fi network or the same IP address, rather. Uh, look at big office buildings that all share one connection. 
you might have a thousand users connected to Wi-Fi in an office location or even hardlined in. It's all running off the same IP. They get that. They understand, hey, this is the way it is. This is normal. Uh, look at how many people go into a Starbucks and, you know, you've got potentially throughout the day, you've got hundreds, maybe thousands of people sharing the same IP address with different devices. Perfectly normal for that to happen. So not a problem there. Um, and like I said, the network is so big at this point, that really does, it, you know, it's not, a, not an issue at all. Okay, Ted wants to know, how would you optimize an e-com site with SitePop? Same thing, Ted. Um, you you want to find keywords that you have traction for, and you want to hit those first, and then just just keep pushing them up, pushing them up, pushing them up. Uh, traction keywords should rank pretty quickly, and then you can take the key, the new traction keywords that came up behind that. So that's a you know e-commerce sites are great for site pop because what you could do you could target like like five main categories of your e-commerce store and potentially you could, you know you could potentially bring up hundreds of keywords by doing that so it's it's very powerful e-commerce stores google loves e-commerce because it's got all those content pages now again as long as your content is is good it's what we call thick content one thing I see, you know, with a lot of e-commerce stores is they'll put up a store and they've got a thousand pages, a thousand products, and there's no descriptions. They use the same title, the same description, and it, it's all just duplicate junk. You know, there's no real meat and potatoes there. If you're selling items and they're different items, you need to describe them. An e-commerce page, a product page should be a sales page. You need sales copy. You need calls to action. You need benefits. You know, why would somebody want this product? You know, don't just, don't just throw it up and say, hey, take it or leave it. That doesn't work very well. The conversion on that's going to suck. So if you're trying to sell something, sell it. You know, tell them why they need it. Tell them what it's going to do for them, why they can't live without it, and then tell them what to do. Say, buy it now. Click the button and take this thing home with you. You know, very, uh, very important, the whole sales. You know, people get online and they forget that sales is part of what makes the world go round. The, the internet is not some magical fantasy land that you just throw your shit up on and it sells itself. It does not work that way. This is what I tell a lot of my marketing students. You know, I've been teaching marketing now for the last couple of years because it's so important. The whole conversion aspect of SEO is really the meat and potatoes now. It's the backbone of it. It's moving people to action. So what I tell them is anything that, that didn't work in the real world is not going to work online. If you're doing something that doesn't work in the real world, I guarantee you it's not going to work online. If you follow a process, like, like everybody is raging about funnels right now marketing funnels and the funnels i see they're not funnels a funnel is nothing more than a sales process and if you're using a sales process online that doesn't work in the real world good luck with that it's not going to work here either you've got to be focused on what works in the real world and then digitizing that if you digitize the sales process that worked in the real world, it's going to work really well online. So keep that in mind. That's, that's probably one of the most important things I could tell you if you're online trying to make money is the, the, the laws of gravity didn't change when you went online. It's still the same as it was outside. So, all right, let's see. Uh, Jose says, I see on site pop back office that we're in position number four for a keyword, but when I search, I don't see it on position four. The position there, that's the page that it's on. So if it says four, that means you're on page four. These things bounce around. Once they get on the page, they'll go up and down. There's 10 slots per page. 
So you can be anywhere on there. If you see like number one, that means you're going to be on the number one page, your first page. You, you could, you know, you'll probably bounce around on there and ultimately hope that you land at the top. So that's, that's the long-term goal. Okay, the performance stuff. Performance stuff does not work on my iPhone. I'm not really sure what you mean, performance stuff. Um, there should be like a little blue button that takes you over to the GT Metrics site. And if that's not working um, on your iPhone, put a, a support ticket in there so our guys can look at that and see what's going on. Okay, Ahmed, I would love to know how I could use SitePop to optimize new e-commerce site. Same thing. What I would do is I would start with your main categories. And what you want to do is you want to connect your categories to your brand. So if your categories, if you're, if you're lucky enough that your categories have traction and you can get, you can get SitePop to start searching for those and then connecting the brand, even if you don't, when you add the brand, make sure you're using keywords that when you connect your brand to them, that you come up on the first or second page. That's going to get you the fastest bang for the buck because what Google is looking for, it's looking for a brand connection. Brand connection is huge at this point, whether you're in commerce or not. The, the only thing about commerce is you can get a bigger bang for your buck with commerce sites because you could potentially rank for a lot more keywords. When you focus on the, on the category, what Google does is it says, okay, this site is related to this category. People know about the site because there's a brand connection. So now, what are the relevant terms to that category? They're going to start putting you up for a whole bunch of terms because of that. So that's that's really the best way to use that for uh, for e-commerce to get it get it cooking, get it to get it popping. Okay, let's see. Answered that one. All right, we're down to the last question here from George. Uh, sorry, I joined late. Missed that. I will check the recording. All right. Well, cool, George. Yeah, I missed. I I apologize for you guys that were on in the beginning. Um, it was we were a few minutes in before I actually hit the recording button. I I forgot to hit it right out of the gate. So if you guys have any other questions, if you got in late and you missed something and you want me to answer it again, go ahead and uh, and put it in. Otherwise, we're uh, we're done for this session. I appreciate you guys coming on. I appreciate all the questions. Um, it's really cool. I will be doing more of these. I'll be doing them probably every couple of weeks for you guys. And just make sure that uh, you're getting what you need. All right. Let's see. A couple more here before we go. Is there a method to rank nationally? Patrick, okay. Um, Nationally, really, it's it's just a different keyword. It's not a localized keyword. National rank works the same as local rank. It's it's just your ranking keywords. If you're doing a national keyword, there might be more competition for it. There might be more searches for it. So what you do, you you just hit it a little harder. So if you had 12 keywords, you might want to cut it back to like three and just hit them, just clobber them over the head. If you're running the agency, um, you can add the number of searches. Say, hey, you know, let's run a thousand searches or two thousand searches, split between these three or four keywords. So you just you just probably need to hit it a little harder. That's all. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> okay, do monthly do the credits roll over monthly? There is no real rollover. You get the same amount every month. So it's it's however many devices you have connected, that's the amount of searches that you're going to get, you know, in any given month. So there's there's not really a it's not credits, it's just searches. They're just ongoing running. You just tap into them whenever you're ready to use them. Okay, let's see. What ratio would you recommend for search volume? If you're looking at like SEM Rush or in Google AdWords and you see search volume, if you've got a keyword that's got, you know, a hundred searches a month, 
you probably don't want to hit that keyword with 500 searches a month. You know, you want it to be a fraction of that. You know, I think, I think Chris said he had run some data on that. I think he was talking about like 20%. So if you've got, you know, keywords that have thousands, you don't have any worries, you know, you can hit those pretty good. So it's basically just common sense is what it boils down to. Don't go in and do stuff that's completely unnatural. We've built a system that operates to be very natural. So just don't force it to do something that's not natural. You know, when you're looking at stuff, um, just kind of, just, just use common sense for the most part. That's, that's about it. Okay, Patrick wants to know, how do we upgrade for agency? Uh, just go ahead and put a support ticket in. I've got a link. I'll send you the link and we can get you, get you upgraded. No problem. Okay. If you want 25,000 more searches, do we buy another agency plan or is there another way? Uh, for that same thing, put a ticket in. We can adjust your account. Uh, we can, we can customize the, the number of searches. So if you outgrow the agency, it's expandable. Not a problem. Just let us know how much you need and uh, we're happy to do that for you. All right, we're back at the end again here. Last shot. Uh, anybody else? Last minute stuff before we wrap up. All right. Okay, guys. Well, that uh, that looks like it's it for today. Like I said, we'll do another one of these in a couple of weeks. Uh, I just I want to make sure you guys are very well supported on this, and you you know you uh, you get up to speed and 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 running and getting results and doing your thing. So that's what we're here for. Definitely here to help. If you have anything between now and then, go ahead and uh, shoot over a support ticket and we'll get it taken care of for you. All right, guys, have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.